Hey everyone, Katie and Sergeant Steel here, and today I'm going to show you how I paint the Katie and 707th Infantry, start to finish. If you'd like to skip to specific sections of this tutorial to get to the part that you may need most or in this critical moment, please check the chapters down below. So I do put those into all my videos to make it easy for you to navigate to whatever part you may need, whether that's base coating, recess shading, highlighting, the base itself, or any of the fine details at the end please check those chapters out. For this painting tutorial and any time I do my hobbying, I just wanna go over a few of the things that I have at my desk that help me be successful. First is this Lucent Light from Game Envy. I highly recommend it. It has drastically changed my painting table and my ability to see my models and not strain my eyes too much when hobbying. The other thing I like is my 360 gaming handle from Redgrass Games, my Redgrass Games wet palette, although you can make your own or get other brands. Uh, they mostly function the same, but I really do like theirs. And also any series of paints or paintbrushes that you wanna use. Uh, for paintbrushes, I use Golden Maple, I use Redgrass Games, or even Tabletop Minions brushes as well. So these are all tools that I use to help me be successful in my painting. The first step is base coating our models. My preferred method of doing this is with Xandru Dust Rattle Can, except, I live in West Virginia, and so sometimes the humidity and the temperature is just not gonna work for that. So one alternative you could do is an airbrush or you could brush on your primer. Today, in this tutorial, I'm demonstrating how to base coat with an airbrush. I'm using Black Filet Hope Primer and placing it onto my Cadian model. I'm gonna wanna make sure I get in and around all the seams and underneath and around the model so there isn't very much or no gray plastic showing left on the model after putting the primer on it. We'll also do the same thing to the base. The other thing you could do is brush on your primer. I've done this plenty of times and it's something that I do now from time to time in order to get the colors on my models. And what you do is you can actually use an airbrush primer and dip your paintbrush into it. Uh, sometimes I pour it into a small bowl and then apply it directly to my model. It goes on thinly, it flows real smooth, and so you don't have to worry too much about like pushing it around to get great coverage. Uh, you can just simply apply it to every surface, let it dry, and you're good to go. Since I didn't use the rattle can to put my Xandru dust down, I will go ahead and use the airbrush to get my first base coat of color, and that's gonna be Xandru dust. So I've placed this into the hopper of my airbrush. I've mixed a little bit of thinning medium in there, and now I'm gonna go ahead and get a nice, good, even coat across my models. I'm gonna do this in very thin sprays so as to not pull it up or create any kind of um, lost detail as I'm doing this. I really trust the rattle can, so now I just need to make sure I'm a little careful myself when doing it via an airbrush. You can also do this with a hand brush, and for the remainder of the tutorial, that's how I'll be applying all of my paints. Next, we're gonna start by base coating Castellan Green. This is primarily for the armor on the model. I'm also gonna use this on the knee pads and the kind of casing for the canteen. Um, and I think this helps create a, diff a balance of color across this. So uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna mix this up, get a little bit on our wet palette, and then I'm going to begin applying it with either a medium layer brush or kind of a smaller basing brush. Um, so you can see here, I got this kind of medium sized brush. I'm just gonna start putting it on. Now, with it thinned down, Castle and Green is a thinner paint, so you're probably gonna have to do at minimum two coats, likely three coats of paint in order to get a nice consistent color across the surfaces. So apply this to your shoulder pads, your helmets, your knee pads, and also the gaiters around the boots there at the bottom, along with the canteen. Now in this particular model, I just realized that it doesn't actually have a canteen pouch. Instead it has more like a canteen strap that holds the metal canteen in place. So in this particular model, I'm gonna paint that as leather, but on all of my other KD models, when it has the canteen pouch, I do that in the Castellan Green. For our next step, we'll be doing a base coat of Rhinox Hide. This will be for all the leather on the model. So we'll be doing this to the boots, the straps, and the pouches. 
Don't forget there's also straps oftentimes on the KDA models for the chin straps for the helmets and you can apply this to those as well. You could apply this to the canteen pouch too. I choose green just to help break up some of the colors on the model. So this will usually take one to two coats of paint um, to get a nice even base coat. If you do want to go for a thinner coat, you could do that and then apply a wash to it later in order to darken it down and maybe through the Xandri dust create some natural highlights. For this tutorial though, I'll be applying at least two thin coats of Rhinox Hide to create a nice solid base layer. To work into the detailing of these base coats on this color and the next several, I'll be using a smaller layer brush in order to accomplish this. So this way I don't cover up any of the Xandri dust or the Castellan green I've already placed onto the model. Now for a base coat of Abaddon Black. We'll be using this on the casing of the weapon. So this paint goes on, it's a little bit thicker, so I like to thin it down in order to use it. The wet palette comes in real handy for being able to do that. So go ahead and apply this to all the casing on the weapon and everything that we're not gonna make metallics here later on. Now we're gonna be doing our metallics. For this, I'm gonna use Lead Belcher on the model. So we're gonna apply this to the muzzle of the weapon, the cartridge, the belt buckle, the buckles on the straps of the leather, and any other elements similar to that. You can also, with a finer brush, grab the buttons that are on the backpack, the sleeves of the jacket, and also, if you wanted to, the gaiters on the boots in order to create those metallic elements as well. For our skin base coat in this tutorial, we'll be doing Bugman's Glow. Now this is to create a more fair skin tone on the model. I do have another tutorial on skin tones that you can watch to see how I paint the various skin tones across my Cadians and Bulgrins and Ogrins. So here, get a nice fine brush and we'll be applying this deep into the recesses on the hands as well as the face that's buried in there around that helmet. Try your best to avoid covering up in your castle in green or your Rhinox hide around the helmet. The next color we'll be using is White Scar. Now, White Scar is a tougher color to use from Games Workshop, so I would recommend maybe some other whites if you have access to them. Well, we're going to stick with the same brand throughout this tutorial. For White Scar, make sure you're using a wet palette or have some way to thin it down well and then apply it to your model with a very fine brush. With this color, we're going to be picking out all of the Imperial symbols that are across the model. So like the skull and wings on the helmet or the Aquila that's kind of implied on the Laz rifle and so forth. Also do this to the pouch where there's the Imperial symbol on the canteen pouch on the back of the model. Now that we have all of our base coats down, it's time to apply some liquid magic. So now we're gonna be doing our recess shades. We're gonna start with Agrax Earth Shade. So what I'm gonna do is use a very small layer brush and dip it into my Agrax Earth Shade here, and begin placing it into the recesses, into the deepest creases or the corners of the model. We're gonna be applying this to pretty much everything, edges of the leather, we're going to be doing it in the creases of the fabric and the folds. We're going to be doing it on all of the metallics and around the color and the body armor as well. So go ahead and begin applying this. And what we'll want to do is load up our brush with only a small amount of Agrax Earthshade to make sure we can control how much flows onto our model. Now, if you accidentally place too much in one spot, you will have to act a little bit quickly in order to dilute and remove some of that material. I would recommend placing your brush into your water pot cleaning it out, drying it off real quick, and then using your brush as a sponge 
to absorb some of that shade. And this way you can make sure it gets applied right the first time. If not, you can always go back with your base colors and neaten it up or wait later to the highlighting stages where you can clean up some of those mistakes. Our next shade is Seraphim Sepia. Now this is a sepia wash as it's stated, so we'll be using this to make things seem dirtier. And I'll be applying this to the fabric that's around the butt of the weapon here. I use this on other details that are on the other versions of the Kidding Shock Troopers, uh, such as maybe playing cards or other elements that I've painted white on them uh, that aren't the Imperial symbols, that are more fabric based stuff or cardboard or paper based stuff. So we'll be applying this here, so it'll be a nice kind of overall wash across the white fabric on the butt of the weapon. For our next step, we'll be applying transfers. So what you'll want to do is get your transfer sheet and kind of look over it to figure out which elements that you want to cut out and then apply it to your models. For me, my Cadians, I typically only do two things. I do the Cadian gate symbol on their right shoulder pad, and then I do their company number, or regiment number on their left shoulder pad. Now that's not how people typically do it all the time. Oftentimes it's squad numbers or platoon numbers. You could make this up to be whatever you wanted. And that's the great thing about Warhammer 40,000. So what you'll need to do is take your hobby knife and cut a few of these out, the ones that you're gonna pick. Then you'll want to make sure you dip them into clean water. So make sure your pot of water is clean, dip them into those and set them down on the table. We'll be prepping and then finishing the surfaces with Microsol and Microset. We'll be using Microset to basically base coat over top of the shoulder pad areas where we'll be applying these transfers. This material allows for your transfer to set nice and smooth and to minimize some of the reflective surfaces of the transfer as you place it onto the model. But we'll need Microsol to clean this up as we go along. So go ahead and put your brush into your Microset. Apply it to the surface of your shoulder pad. While it's still a little wet, slide off your transfer and slide it onto the shoulder pad into position. Now, don't worry yet about this being perfectly smooth. Wait for your micro set to dry. Then apply micro saw. What this does is softens up the transfer to help it smooth out and get a nice perfect finish over top of your rounded or uneven surfaces. Apply several coats of this waiting for the, the transfer to dry in between coats of your Microsol. Once you're happy with the way it's laying down on the shoulder pad or whatever surface you've applied it to, then we're gonna move on to the next step. Now that we have our transfers nice and flat on the surfaces of our models, we need to do two things. We need to get rid of some of the shine of the transfers. And we need to smooth them out for any later coats of paint we might apply to the models or simply to hide the edges of the transfers. To do this, I would recommend using a pigmentless medium such as Lamian medium here. So use it just like you do any other paint, shake it up really well, apply it to your brush, and then put it over top of your transfers. Since it's transparent, you don't have to worry about it impacting any of the colors underneath. For our next step, we'll begin our highlights. So we're going to start with Strachan Green. And what we're going to do is edge highlight all of the armored panels, the kneecaps, the gaiters, and the canteen pouch here on the model. So using a thin layer brush, go ahead and apply some Strachan Green to your paintbrush Make sure that you don't overload the brush because we're going to want to have lots of control here and then go around the edges of the panels in a nice thin line. To make that green pop even just a little more, next we're going to use Nurgling Green. The way I like to apply this is to the finest tips, points, and edges of the armor, gaiters, or canteen pouch. So I mean this like actually applying it like it's almost a dot or applying it finely over the most protruding edge of a surface. So here on the chest of the armor, I'm going to apply it just to the corners 
along the brim of the Cadian helmet. I'm gonna apply it there at the forefront just to help make that pop a little more and draw your attention towards the face. And then we're also gonna be doing it to the corners and the edges of the gator and the canteen pouch as well. So just go around and pick out those, those corners or the highest tips and spots on that green surface. Now we're gonna begin highlighting the fabric. To do this, we're gonna start with Ushabti Bone. Once again, we're gonna be using a small layer brush in order to apply this across the model. But the other thing I recommend doing is not only picking out the edges and the raised parts of the seams or pieces of the fabric and cloth, but also to think about where you may want texture or you may wanna see some more shade and contrast kind of happening on the model. And we can actually use the layer paints to create that on the various surfaces. So here, I may actually use Ushapti Bone to highlight both above and below the crease that grows around the bottom of the coat on the Cadian models. And this helps bring that recess shade that we did earlier up even more. Don't forget, you can also use this as a way to create effects in places that you may not otherwise anticipate, but I'll do it on the elbows and the knees if there aren't a knee pad there in order to kind of create a brighter spot and to show that there's kind of that kind of raised area on the model and transition from high to low. You can also do this to kind of hide any of your maybe shading work that didn't turn out the way you wanted to. And so you could kind of use this to highlight that a little bit. Another technique you can do is take your Ushapti bone or other fabric highlights and just dab them along the edges of an area that's maybe rounded, such as the bottom of the backpack, in order to create a highlight without it being a fine edge. So you can apply this in several ways as you work through your fabric on the model. To highlight that up even more, we're gonna be using Screaming Skull. Once again, get a very fine layer brush or fine detail brush, and we're just going to apply this to the corners or the highest raised areas that we've already highlighted. Now remember, less is more here, so just apply it sporadically as needed in order to make some areas pop. I love doing this to the pockets or kind of other areas that still blend in to a lot of the heavy fabric areas in order to make them stand out more on the model. So go around, pick out all your corners and your highly raised areas with your Screaming Skull. Now we're gonna begin highlighting the leather. The first color we're going to use is Scrag Brown. This is a great kind of medium orange tone we're going to apply this the same way we have done with our first highlight layers on the other two surfaces so far. So get a nice medium to small layer brush and we're gonna begin applying this in lines around the edges of the model. Grab all your raised areas and create texture on the surfaces as needed. One of the things you can also do with this is take a very fine brush, a very fine detail brush, get it nice and thin on there and create horizontal lines as if you're leather has been kind of stretched and cracked a little bit in various spots to help really create more texture and interest on your surfaces. I typically do that on the wider pieces of the leather, such as the leather straps from the backpack that go over the shoulders and the armor, on the belt a little bit, sometimes on the pouches, especially if those are larger pouches and have a lot of that Rhinox hide showing through. And I'll also do it on the boots just to make them look a little more cracked and worn in a few places as well. For our final leather highlight, we're gonna be using Death Claw Brown. Now this one will want to apply the same way, just put a few dots of it here and there, get the highest raised areas and grab a few of those details. You can also use this 
with your fine detail brush to create a few more cracks and so forth on the more flat surfaces of the leather just to help create some more depth and interest in the material itself. Now remember, you don't need to actually have a line or a crease there. You can just create these things with your paint and imply that there's more going on with the material. So use this sparingly because this is your final highlight for your leather. So just apply it here and there as we go along. Now we're gonna be applying Dawnstone to the black of the weapon. Use a fine detail brush here. We want to be able to capture some of the recesses by highlighting them on both sides. We also want a nice fine edge highlight along those good 90 degree corners on the weapon as well. But you may wanna grab things such as the sights or other smaller little details with the Dawnstone in order to highlight those up too. So apply it to your brush, prefer using a wet palette and make sure that you have it thin enough that you can have good brush control, but not too thin that it runs or pulls into the recesses. So begin going around and applying this to all the various seams and edges on your weapon. If you make your lines a little too thick, like I've done here at the beginning of the tutorial, you can just leave a little bit of a bad and black on your wet palette and come in and put it in between your Dawnstone lines to help clean that up and create even better, cleaner highlights on your weapon. We've done most of everything except for the skin. Now's a good time to pause, look over your model, and start doing some cleanup as necessary. You have all your colors hopefully on your wet palette or available still on your palette and usable. So you can go back through and grab any kind of um, accidents that you've made and clean them up nice and neat before moving on. This could also be the moment where you highlight up the whites, which we haven't done yet. We did shade them with Agrax Earthshade, but you may wanna go back through and actually brighten those up a little bit, depending on how you applied the shade to your whites. For our skin, now we're going to shade it. We're gonna do Reichlin Flesh Shade right over top of the Bugman's Glow. This is going to create a lot of good depth that we can highlight from on your skin. So shake up your Reichland Flesh Shade really well, set it down, get a little bit on your brush and apply it nice and neatly to the face and hands of the model. Now we're gonna get down to the final works here on the skin. So we're gonna brighten this up with some Cadian Flesh Tone. So go ahead and get a little bit on your wet palette and use a very small detail brush in order to begin applying this. What we wanna do is avoid all of the recesses. So get the bridge of the nose, the cheeks, the jawline, the brow, but don't get down into the recesses where the eyes are located down into between the fingers. We just wanna get the knuckles, the lines, edges of the fingers, the back and back of the hand. And like I said, any of those non-recessed areas. To finish up the flesh, we're gonna use Kislev Flesh, and this will be our final highlight. We're gonna apply this in a very similar manner as we have all of our other secondary highlights to our surfaces. So we just wanna pick out the most raised areas. On the flesh, I would recommend the brows, the bridge of the nose, the knuckles, each individual knuckle themselves, and the tops of the cheekbones and the chin. You could also do, depending on the lips of the model, um, more work around there to help make that pop a little more. Or maybe if they have the creases that come down from their nose towards the, around their mouth, you could grab that as well to help brighten that up a little bit and make that stand out a little more.
This next step is entirely optional, but it's something I really love doing to bring out the details of my model, and that's doing the eyes and teeth. So we're gonna use White Scar to be able to do this in the finest detail brush we have. So go ahead and load your brush up nice and neatly and get in there. All we wanna do is try to grab the bottom edge of any teeth that are showing or the top edge. And then all we wanna do for the eyes is come in and just try to put one dot right where the raised area of the eyeball is. So usually you wanna, if you have to do this, you'll wanna like pull it towards the outside of the model in order to make the nice white line that you want for your eyeball. The other crazy step you could take is take Xerius Purple to give yourself the purple Cadian eyes on your model. Now when applying this, once again, the finest detail brush you have, control is everything, and you'll want to do the line in a vertical manner. This seems to work out real well, especially if you're not using magnifying glasses in order to create the purple pupil in the middle of the eyes. Next, we'll use Mephiston Red and Fire Dragon Bright Orange in order to create the lights on the LAS gun. So, go ahead and get your Mephiston Red on your wet palette. Load it up onto a detail brush and get in there and just put a couple dots of it on the lights or the buttons that you want to pop out on the LAS gun. Then, take your Fire Dragon Bright and put a dot of it on the very top of those lights or buttons on your LAS gun. You could highlight this up one more time and I would recommend using a light tan color like Screaming Skull to create a final highlight if you wanted to. All right, we're down to the very end here. And what I mean is we're doing our basing material. So I'm going to use Sterling Mud in order to create a textured mud effect on the bottom of the model. Take this and your applicator tool. Typically, it's a flat piece of plastic tool. GW sells one, or you can get any other kind of flat applicator. You can also use a paintbrush, but do realize, don't use a good paintbrush. The pigments will get up into, like the pigments and sand, will get up into the bristles and ruin the brush. So use your applicator and go around applying this to the bottom of the base. When doing so, make sure it's uneven. Some of it should be thicker and then some should be thinner in order to create some varying texture onto the base. Next, we're going to apply Steel Legion Drab to highlight up our Sterling Mud. To do this, what I like to do is take an old layer paintbrush that I have, put a little bit of Steel Legion Drab on my wet palette, apply it to the brush, but make sure it's not too thick, nor do we want it too thin to where it's gonna be runny, but it's gonna create some translucency by having it thinned down. Then we're gonna take this layer brush, we're gonna drag it sideways across the sterling mud to create our highlights. This allows you to have more control than you would if you were using a traditional dry brush to try to apply this to your sterling mud. And really we are dry brushing, we're just doing it with a little bit of moisture in the pigment, which you should, and we're doing it with a brush that'll give us more control, but also a brush we're not worried about ruining. Then we're going to take the Steel Legion Drab and apply it around the rim of the base in order to tie this in from top to bottom on our model and then onto our gaming table. For our final highlight on the mud, we're going to use you Shab T-Bone. So here, we're gonna apply a little bit to our wet palette, get it onto, once again, an old maybe layer brush that's wearing out, and then we're gonna apply it sparingly across the top of the mud. We just wanna create some fine highlights and make it pop a little bit, creating that contrast between the dark sterling mud, the steel legion drab, and finally the shoe shapty bone. So just apply this like a fine highlight across the top of the basing material. If you did happen to get any of your Ushapti bone onto the edge of your base, you just go back with your Steel Legion and clean that up real quick. 
In terms of paint, the last thing that we need to do is varnish our model. What I like to do is use a good matte varnish. So here I have Windsor and Newton matte varnish. I'll be spraying this through my airbrush. I do recommend the GW matte varnish. I think it works really well, the one in the rattle can. You can also hand brush on your matte varnish too. Any of this works just fine, but since I have an airbrush, I'm gonna be using it as part of this tutorial. So I'm gonna load it up and go ahead and spray it all over the model to seal in my colors and to reduce chipping and scratching on the paint that I've just finished up. So let this set and let it dry. And then you could go ahead and add a few more details like grass or rocks, or you can go ahead and enjoy your model. Let's see how this all turned out. There we go. So as you can see, here is Arcadian completed with his full squad ready for combat, ready to push back the Black Legion, the Renegades, the Heretics, and conquer the galaxy for the Emperor of Mankind. You can also see where we could use maybe some of the colors in different ways on different models. Here's one example where we have the bandage arm on the Cadian, and so you could use the same white with Seraphim Sepia on that to achieve that effect there. I thinned it down a little bit more just to not take away from the bandage. But this applies to all the models. If you want some painting tutorials on other aspects that you see here, such as the flamer or melta tip, I do have those tutorials available and you can watch those here on my YouTube channel. I will also try to take this tutorial and piece some of it out uh, so you can come back later and maybe not browse through the whole tutorial, but just check on pieces of it, such as doing uh, the basing material, doing transfers and so forth, because I have gotten requests for that. But overall, I think this was a great tutorial. I hope you all think the same and I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope you have found it valuable. So. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. Please come back and watch more if you don't mind. I will be doing some battle reports and some more tutorials as always, unit reviews as well, and anything else you all may be interested in. So thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for painting and playing for the Emperor. So have fun wargaming, and as always, Cadia stands.